Good morning, Facebook, and good morning, YouTube. Not just any morning, it is Monday morning. And I thought instead of talking about doing Motivational Monday, I wanted to share something that was a little more, it's technical slash performance in nature. And by the way, I'm Bill DeWeese. I am a 16-year full-time professional voiceover talent and um, also a voiceover coach and voiceover demo producer. And every weekday morning, around 8 to 8.15 a.m. Eastern Time, I hop on for a few minutes just to share a thought to help you out in your voiceover journey, to help you in your journey toward profitability, meaning how do you make money? How can I help you make more money in voiceover? Um, so, first of all, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Uh, of course, we have uh, we have a, a a regular and growing regular group of folk that that stop in and take part in the broadcast from literally all over the world, and it continues to grow. And I I appreciate you being part and invite you to be a part of this this growing community of folks who um, are not only interested in voiceover but are actively involved in making it happen in their life. So, this morning I'm taking a question. Well, on Fridays, every Friday is a live Q&A, and then I'm not always able to get to every question uh, on Friday. So what I do is I go back and I grab some stuff and I bring it into the following week. So this morning, I want to talk about proper distance between your mouth and the microphone, specifically as it relates to voiceover. But some of what I have to say will relate to other things, too. Those of you in broadcasting, even singing, there's, there's some carryover. Um, and some of the things I'm going to talk, be talking about. So first of all, I'm going to give you the general rule of thumb, how far. And then secondly, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the dynamics of a microphone and what it means to be closer and further away from the mic, the proximity effect, as it's called, and how that might better serve you, at least to be aware of it, and how you can use it in your voiceover, voiceover career. So generally speaking, your mileage may vary. In other words, microphones tend to vary in their sensitivity um, depending on what type of microphone and the brand of microphone and the components that are used. So these are general guidelines to use, but I found them to uh, be true more times than not. And the first is, in terms of how far to be away from the microphone, generally speaking, you want to be about six to eight inches mouth to microphone. And you don't need to carry, here's the great thing, you don't need to carry a ruler or a tape measure with you to figure that out. Literally, the distance between the tip of your thumb and the tip of your pinky when spread out is going to be about what you want. So if you look at me and my microphone here, I'm, I'm tip of pinky to tip of, uh, of thumb. And over time, you do this long enough, you don't have to think about it. You just know when you're too close or you're too far away simply by just looking, by looking at it. So that's a general place to start. And what, while we're here, let me just mention one other thing regarding microphone technique. When I say six to eight inches, I don't mean place the microphone directly in front of your face six to eight inches. But what I do, I, uh, I place it, I start, you know, you can start by putting it right in front of your face, but then you, you want it to be off axis. In other words, you don't want it directly in front of your mouth, usually, because when you do, you risk popping P's and exploding um, like your, your S's and your SH's, and you don't, you don't want that. So again, generally speaking, there may be exceptions to this rule, but generally speaking, you want to be off axis. So what I do, start with the microphone in front of your face and then get the right distance and then move the microphone just a few inches off to the side. That way, the air passes past the microphone instead of exploding upon the on the capsule of the microphone and creating unwanted extra noise. That's not, that's not a good thing. Uh, if you have good microphone technique, you can get away without even having a, a, a popper like this or a popper stopper or um, a windshield, um, although it, does, it can stop the humidity from your breath from, from collecting you know, on the capsule of your microphone. So it is a good pr protective device for when you inadvertently, <clears throat> excuse me, spit or something of that sort, which happens. I literally dropped my mic by my mouse, which means I couldn't unmute my microphone, so I'm back. So again, 
off axis, just a couple of inches, but six to eight inches away from your mouth, generally speaking, end of thumb to, uh, to, to, tip of, to tip of pinky. Now, the proximity to the microphone, the distance away, will also determine the tone of the audio that you get. So the further away you are from the microphone, and this is called proximity effect, the further away you are from the microphone, the more, the higher the frequency, you'll hear the higher frequencies more so than the lower frequencies. In other words, the further away from the microphone, the higher frequencies are going to make it to the microphone. The lower frequencies can't make the journey quite as far. They don't, the lower frequencies don't travel as far. Have you ever noticed, like if you're out in, the fi- in a field someplace, and there's somebody like that's, that's 100 yards, 200 yards away, and they're yelling for you, you don't hear the low end of their voice. Everything sounds very high. So those of you who are involved like in sound design, if you've done, done sound design work, you understand that one of the ways you can create the illusion of space is by pulling down or rolling off some of those lower frequencies because typically the further you are away, the more you're getting the higher frequencies. Well, it is inter- this is kind of a side note. It is interesting, though, that low frequencies tend to travel through through material better than high frequencies. So, for instance, if you're recording and you hear the low rumble of a truck, it's because those low frequencies tend to penetrate and vibrate through material better than the high frequencies, which get stopped. But when you're in open spaces, the uh, the higher frequencies travel further. It's just an, it's an interesting thing to know and also, again, helpful if you're doing any kind of sound design work. And then the closer you get to the microphone, the more you're going to hear the lower end. So think of it this way. If somebody, if somebody was whispering, I mean, literally right up in your ear, you're going, to, you're going to hear those lower frequencies as well as the high, the low end as well as the high end, that full range. But if they're back here, you're not going to hear the lower end as well. You can still hear the higher end, but the lower end doesn't quite make it to the microphone. Again, that's called, that's called the proximity effect. And uh, that can be helpful, again, if you're trying to create the illusion of closeness, maybe in a more intimate type of, of read, where you want them to hear the full frequency. It sounds more like they're right in your ear. Or if you want to create the illusion that you're further away, you can simply, well, you physically get further away from the microphone. And they'll be able to hear that because it change, there's a tonal difference in the audio. So again, just a, a quick lesson on how far away you should be from your microphone and the things to consider in regards to uh, the proximity effect and how frequencies travel. Hope you find that helpful. Uh, Let's check in now on the live stream and see what's up. I always invite you to place your comments in there. Let me find them. There we go. Okay, good. Let's see here. Wow, we've got a a good crowd on here this morning. Let's see here. Hey, Jolie, how are you up in Minnesota? Janet in Florida, Anthony in Brooklyn. Good morning from Grass Lake. Good morning. Wisconsin is sunny today. Awesome. All right. I guess the entire state must be getting geared up for fall. Wisconsin in the fall, like Oktoberfest, for instance. Um, That's when you guys really can, uh, you you make your hay when the sun shines, and that is definitely during the, the the fall months of the year. And then Russ from Stormy Cleveland, Ohio. Hey, Russ, good morning. Josiah, what's up? Bruce, happy Inspirational Monday, he says, from from Louisville, Kentucky. Hey, Juliet, how are you this morning? Uh, Let's see here. Athens, Greece in the house this morning. Love it. David in Louisville. Good morning. Lawrence and Raleigh. Hello there. Howdy to Patricia in Buffalo. Hey, Pamela in Tennessee. Grant in Columbus, Ohio. Um, Let's see here. We've got Brad in South Carolina, Ronald in Philly, Keith in Florida. Bruce, yes, I did swipe out my microphone. I went, I've, I used to know him in TLM 103, which this is for many years. And then I, sw- I, I bought a Sennheiser MKH 416 just to help mitigate some of the noise. Um, I moved, uh, we moved and, and went from my yard was like two and a quarter acres before this to a place where we're just in a residential area with a bunch of houses and a bunch of noise. But what I found out was I just like this microphone more. I'm more comfortable with it. It's not a mi- better microphone, 
so if you have a Sennheiser 416, you've, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a great microphone. It's, it's just a different, it's a, and when you've used the one of, uh, you know, I was, I was liking it, liking in it to having a blankie when you're a little kid, you, there's a comfort level, you know what to expect from it. And there's a great comfort level that I have with this microphone and I love it. Oh, let's see here, Sandra. Good morning. Robin, how are you? Good to hear from you. I hope you're doing well. Texas, Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, let's see here. Kansas City, Oregon, the Philippines, Harrogate, North uh, Yorkshire, UK. Hey, Mark. Good morning. Hey, James in the um, Atlanta area. And John in Indianapolis. All right, awesome. It's first time here for the live stream. Hey, guys, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. I hope uh, you take the information, use it to your benefit. And remember, there's over 700 videos on this YouTube channel. They don't cost you a penny. I encourage you to, to consume as many as you can. Go back and watch them again. Learn as much as you can. And when you go to the, uh, the, um, the description section of the below the video, which I hope you do, You'll see links to a lot of my, a lot of resources, including my training, which obviously I'd love you to uh, to be a part of. So thanks again for being here. Have yourself a great day, and I look forward to talking to you again very soon.